Welcome everyone to this video. Uh, today is actually my opening day for the tailored wedding uh, where I'll be working on uh, bridal. I will be working on wedding dresses and bridal and different things, formal wear and stuff like that. Also men's suits and things, uh, but all new clothing. And um, the first day is uh, kind of uh, gonna be slow of course, but I just want to talk to you in this video about different things to do in your shop since I just set my shop up again after four years. Uh, I was in business before and um, there's just some different things that I do every morning when I come into my shop. Like I come into my shop, I look at my calendar book and see who's on for the appointments today. And then I also come in and I turn on my iron right away because I always have projects going on, especially with this new business. Um, I will be making um, different things, accessories for weddings. So that's what I'll be working on. I started making some little uh, dresses, uh, crocheted bodice tops. So now I'm in the process of uh, sewing them on the machine, sewing the, they're basted right now. So where the, um, the crocheted part and the satin part uh, get sewed by machine. And then I also add a lining. So I'm just getting ready to iron these out and cut the lining for them. So there's this one I started and then there's this one um, that I did. And this one is just kind of the bodice part and I was gonna put some layers on the bottom, but I didn't like the bow I put on. So I'm gonna take the bow off. But um, there's that one. And then there's some other larger sizes uh, that I did. And they all need linings now. And then I have to decide, um, am I going to put some crinoline in them? Am I going to put rolls of uh, lace or ruffles or anything like that? So that's what I'm working on today. And I'm also wanting to design a new bridal face mask. So I'll be embroidering and working on a face mask. But I just wanted to give you some heads up, some tips. Um, I'd love to show you all the way, all around, but I need to do that on my phone and my phone is charging right now. But anyway, we'll start off with this, this. So one other thing that I went today and I did was to tweak my prices. So when I was in business before, I did a lot of tailoring, lots of men's suits, jeans, uh, pant hems, um, suits, jackets. And at the, towards the end, I did a lot of prom dresses and wedding dresses and things like that. And the prices are totally different from what they were four years ago, right? So I had to tweak all of my prices. So I'm gonna grab my price list. So that's another thing when you open up your shop, um, you wanna make sure that you have a hard copy of your price list because it's important to, um, you know, to have on hand. So if you have people calling you, making an appointment, asking you what are different prices that you have um, and things like that, you'll want to know that clearly. You don't want to hesitate, right? You want to be able to say it clearly what your prices are. So let me grab that. I'll tell you a few things that are on my price list. So some of the things that are on, that's on my price list, um, most of these are for formal uh, wedding dresses. So I have shortened sleeves, right? So shorten or lengthen sleeves, right? And then the price for that accordingly. And then um, make into short sleeves. So you could take off the sleeve and make into a short sleeve if they don't like the sleeves. So a lot of times when these gals buy dresses, there's parts of the dress that they really like, and then there's other parts of the dress that they really don't like. <coughs> Excuse me. And so sometimes you're doing a little bit of redesign. So you have to know when to cut it, right? Know what you're good at, know when you can redesign something and when you don't feel comfortable in redesigning something. But whatever it is you are comfortable with, you wanna make sure that you have that written out what you can do all the different things that you can offer and provide for somebody as a service. So I have taper sleeves, add and make straps, uh, bra cuffs, take inner blood outsides, recut the neckline, shorten halter top, take in at the back seam, at the zipper, take in at the back seam with buttons, make into a corset back, right? Instead of having a zip up back, make it into a corset back. Uh, bustle one at one point in the back, bustle the dress up to one point, bustle at three points, 
Shorten the waistline. Take in at the bust. Ease the front. Uh, add pockets. Take in at the shoulders. Make a slit in the back or on the side. Uh, add a hook and eye. Decorate the front. Make a belt or a sash. Narrow the skirt. Make a purse. Make a veil. Make a ring bearer pillow. Make a personalized ring bearer pillow. Add crinoline to the skirt or take out the crinoline. And then shorten the dress hem. Uh, then decide if it's gonna, you're only going to do one layers or you're going to do two layers and what you're going to charge for each. Uh, so for a two-layer dress, have your average price for your two-layer dress. And then shorten the train, add lace or trim to the hemline of the dress, reshape the hemline, and then it goes on into men and women's formal wear, which would be more like a suit and things like that. So it goes on to shorten sleeves, take in sides, let out the waist, take in the waist, plain hem, cuffs, uh, and taper the legs. Uh, and so you then you then the next sheet was just about... Uh, what your minimum charge is, uh, you'll want to know that and have that. And then um, I also have on here shorten sleeves of the dress shirt, move the butt top button over. A lot of people always need that. Shorten bottom of shirt, move, uh, iron the shirt, tighten all buttons. And then your minimum charge. And then what you will charge hourly for like your beadwork. So if you're doing beadwork, you should have an hourly charge. And when you're sewing on beadwork, you will be timing yourself to know what to charge them. So that's very important too. So to know your beadwork charge. And also if the beadwork is intricate and it has to go back on as a pattern. So I charge more for my pattern beadwork than I do for my just sew on the beads, right? Uh, so sometimes some of these dresses have a little faint pattern on the dress and you have to put it back exactly the way that it was before when you took it apart to take it in. So you will want to follow that pattern when you put the beads back on and I charge just a little bit more for that. And um, so yeah, and then just other little simple things if there's other simple things that you can offer. So you want to make sure you have your hard copy and you're able to use your hard copy um, as you get started and it probably takes you know a good you know being a little bit busy probably takes a good I'd say six months to actually really start to learn your prices right you need to um, really learn them and know what they are just off of memory right uh, so if you're out somewhere someone asks you what do you charge for this and then you can you can tell them you know um, so it, it takes it some time you know uh, especially like I was in business before, my prices were completely different than what they are today. And so you'll want to know what they are. So another thing that I think is very important to uh, have when you start your business, and that is a business card. So I just got new business cards. So on the front of my business card, it states all about my business here doing um, wedding formal wear, right? So it has my phone number, um, and then on the back, it has um, the address, and then it has where you can actually um, go to my website, and it also has where someone could email me if they're, they don't want to call or they're at work and they can email me with a question, they can also email me. Um, so you'll want to have something like that. And then I also mentioned that I do coaching. So I help other sewing shops no matter what type of sewing shop you have, to help them to get established, to help them get started, to set up their shop properly so it flows, um, and different things like that. Uh, and all the essentials that you will need for your sewing shop and just really how to um, be able to be online, how to market yourself online, how to drive traffic to your website, how to drive traffic to your shop, how to put different ads out there that draw people in, uh, different places to go, things like that. Um, there's just a lot to my coaching uh, program that I offer for people who want to actually get in business for themselves. And I know so many people who are, um, you know, sewing, creative, crafty, um, and actually can make clothes and things like that. 
but they, they run their business as a hobby. So one day you'll have to decide, hey, is this really my talent? Is this really my skills? Is this really what I want to do? And to get serious with yourself about being a business owner and to start um, offering something and to start treating it like a business, right? So I get up, I shower, I get ready. I'm already programmed to come to work today. If I get a call, I can take an appointment today yet. Um, so it just, um, you have to be prepared for it. You can't just sit in your sewing shop in your sweatpants and just say, oh, well, you know, one day I'm going to have my business. You know, you have to get up, make your bed, get cleaned up, get dressed, be professional and get the word out that you are running a business and let people know what you have to offer. In any type of a sewing business, there's just so much that you can offer. And if you don't know all the hard stuff, that's okay. You have to start where you are. You have to, um, you know, do the things that you're good at, offer those services. And as you progress, you'll get better and better. You can offer more, right? You can get more machinery and things like that. So it just takes that initial uh, point of you coming to terms with yourself. Do I really want this as a, a hobby or do I really want my shop as a business? And so you have to be able to answer that question. Some people just love to sew for fun. Some people just love to sew just to be sewing, right? Um, and then there's other people who love to offer a service to the public to really help them out. There's so many people out there that don't sew, don't know how to sew on a button, don't know how to do some of the simplest things. And if we can offer our services to them, we get rewarded, we get paid for that. And it's actually a nice living, right? So you just have to get your name out there more, get your wording out there more and really be able to um, you know, define what it is you want. And if you just want to keep it as a hobby, keep it as a hobby. But it's a good way to bring money in and to bring in an income. So um, I decided to go back to work because I am in my coaching business and there's a lot of idle time in between, right? So it's like I can do both. So I can do my sewing service for three days a week and the rest of the time I do my um my calls i talk to people from all over the world i talk to uh whoever is has a sewing business and wants to scale their business to be able to be more presentable online to be able to drive traffic to their location or maybe they've been in business for a long time and they are deciding to transfer their business to something else i've spoken to a lot of people who have had a tailoring business or they've had an embroidery business or they've had a design business and now they have decided to go into something that's really in their heart something that they really want to do uh, where their passion lies that's where you can succeed the best is where your passion lies i love to design and that's why i decided to do some of the little flower girl dresses and things like that and then accessories for the uh, wedding. That helps me to keep my creativity going. And it's always, it's something that I just like to do, right? And, um, and at, in the meantime, I love helping people out. So I only take appointments right now for uh, bridal wear and formal wear. So I only take, you have to book by an appointment. So if I don't have an appointment that day, then I do my designing and things like that or read, um, you know, do something for my shop. Like today I just tweaked my prices. So I have that all printed out and I have uh, extra copies of that. So if someone asks me, do you have a price list? Then I can give them one, right? Um, and things like that. So there's just a lot to it. So I have my cash register um, ready to go into my new cash wrap, but my cash wrap is not completely built yet. So as soon as that gets done, then I can transfer all of my cash wrap stuff over to my cash wrap and uh, get that all organized. And I have my iron on already. That's one of the first things I do when I come out here. I turn my iron on to get the steam ready, make sure that the water is filled up, and, um, and then I'm ready to, um, you know, to do that, to, to iron. I'm gonna be ironing some um, lining today because we're gonna be putting lining uh, in those little dresses that I showed you. 
So I just have some scrap pieces of lining and some of this might work and some of it might not. So um, I have a little bit bigger piece here that I think will work for the little tiny dress and then I can find another piece for the other one. And then so what else I did was um, I put in this counter which I didn't have before so it kind of shrunk my shop up a little bit having it but now all of my stuff is stored underneath here. So I have all of my patterns in a big tub. I have all of my cotton or stuffing. I have, um, each tub has something different in it, all for sewing and what I need for designing, right? So that's all, you know, all put away underneath the little skirt here. And then yesterday what I did is I recovered all of my boards. So I recovered this one. This one is great for sleeves uh, and things like that. So um, I recovered this. I went and recovered all the way down to the wood. So it has a new uh, kind of a dense um, batting underneath here. It's kind of a thick, bent, dense batting underneath here. And then it has the muslin over top. And then I stapled it. And when it gets really curved here, you have to kind of use, it's hard to get in there with the staple gun but I used just um, uh, thumbtacks inside there. So it worked out real good. Uh, so I cover these, you know, every time they get a little bit, you know, dirty looking or something like that, because I'm going to be look, working on uh, wedding dresses. So I have to make sure that everything is a little bit cleaner than just only working on men's suits, right? You have to make sure your things are clean. And so then I did the same thing with this one and it's pretty, pretty heavy, pretty solid. So this is what I usually press on. Um, I like using this bigger end because it's a little bit wider surface, so I use that. And then I use this one, and of course I cut just a little piece of press, presser's cloth, pressing cloth, and, and that. So then I have my rulers here, so I have my yardstick here, and then I have other yardsticks. And the thing about yardsticks and rulers is, um, I don't like using the wooden ones. I do have some wooden ones, but I hardly ever use them because the numbers really kind of rub off and things. So I love using metal yardsticks. And so this one is a little bit uh, longer. I love, this is one of my favorites. And then we also have, um, so I have those uh, here. And then I also have the one that is um, for doing cuffs, right? It's an inch and a quarter wide. This one here. This one is an inch and a quarter wide uh, metal yardstick, well, foot yardstick. Um, not a yardstick, but a ruler. Um, I have two like this. I don't know where the other one is. Maybe it's in here still. Um, yeah, it's in here. So I have two of these. And these are great for um, marking your cuffs. So when you mark your cuffs, you. Um, it's the width of this inch and a quarter. It's the width of this yard, this uh, ruler, right? So you just mark it out four times for your cuff. So then you will fold it on your second line and then flip it up to press it. And then you have your cuff. So it's really nice for marking cuffs because the, the same width is what your lines would be. So I love that. So I have all my rulers here. And then I have my sewing books here. Some of my sewing books here. I haven't brought the rest down, but there's some of them are here. I have an extra iron if I need it. I have my lint brush. I have some other sewing tools here um, if I need those. I have my serging machine. I have my running stitch um, for lengthwise uh, embroidery, my singer, I love that. And then my juki, I love that. This is my main machine that I use now. And then I have another singer that I use for leather. I use this for heavier stuff, maybe belt loops, things like that. Um, and that and then I have my blind stitch machine and then my embroidery machine is in the back with some other t-shirt machines coffee cups um, Hot stamp machines different things like that and then so another thing that I do is um, I have two closets, right? So I have one closet that is for things coming in so we're going to be making some tags that say Monday through Sunday um, of things that where you will file your things with things that need to be done. So when you start bringing in clothing and items that need to be worked on, I have one closet that I put them in and it'll have a Monday through Friday 
or a Monday through Saturday, whatever you set up your weekly schedule as. I try to do my Monday through Saturday because once in a while I have somebody say, I want to pick something up on a Saturday morning. So I just do Monday through Saturday. Um, that way I have that extra day. So anyway, so you set your, your file system up with some little cards that hook on the rod of your hanging system, right? Um, so things that need to be worked on. So you put it in there in the date that it's due, the day that it's due, and you want to work. So you're working two, three, or four days ahead of time before it is actually due. If you can keep yourself that straight, you will be doing really good. And then the other closet that I have is where I just hang things by orders where the things are done. So everything in there is just in the hanging space and it's done. So I have two separate closets, one for incoming and one for outgoing, okay? So that's what I do. That keeps me straight. That's what I've always done. Um, so I like that. Um, another thing you may want to also do in your sewing shop is to have extra hangers. Sometimes the bridal hanger will break or if you're working on a prom dress, the hanger may break, something like that. So I bought brand new hangers for dresses um, and things like that. So we'll, I'm good there. And um, so yeah, so and I just wanted to tell you a few things that um, I felt was important for you to know when you want to um, you know, scale your business and things like this. There's a lot of things that you can do. There's a lot of techniques that you can do online and things that can help you to start making more revenue, to start getting people in your shop. So um, you're going to be going, I'm going to be videotaping some of my process here so you can get a good uh, vision of how things kind of work and flow. And um, so I just wanted to mention that to you. Another thing that I did that I thought is kind of, uh, good. So I have a scheduling system that's online. So I do all of my scheduling for my coaching appointments online. So everything is there where you can open up your calendar. You'll get emails all the time about um, who booked an appointment with you and things like that. So what I did was I went on there and set up one that where brides could go and or people who wanted to book an alteration appointment with me they could go on there and book their own appointment i'll get notified so what you do is you set it up for the only the days that you will take appointments so i think mine is monday wednesday and thursday so um so i did that so they can go on there and book an appointment for that those times and then the other coaching calls are um, the days that I'm not doing my sewing, right? So they are, or they're after. I have some that are after appointments. So, um, so it balances out, it works out, you know? And it'll send you uh, uh, the email for which appointment is for which. You just have to keep it straight. And then I also transfer those appointments into my hands-on um, calendar book. So if our internet goes down, I'm not left in the dark. So. Each day I get up, I see if I have any appointments. If I do, I write them in my own calendar book. So I know what's going on for each day. You can time yourself a little bit better throughout the day and plan things out a little bit better when you know ahead of time what your day is going to be like. So I hope this video was helpful. I will also do a video and give you a tour of my new shop. It seems a little bit empty right now because I'm going to be making things to sell. So I have some cabinets and tables in here that are a little bit empty right now, but hopefully we will start to fill them up with different things, accessories for uh, bridal and get the place really uh, looking good. So thank you all for watching. My, my name is Karen. And if you need to boost your um, you know, business online or you need help with your business, um, you, know, you can book a call with me. I'd love to uh, help you and to coach you into um you know making your business a success so and then if you just like to listen to my content please go ahead and subscribe to this channel there will be more and more coming i've been in the last few months i've been a couple months i have been just really working on my shop and uh we redid the whole thing and um it just was a lot of work we also redid my kitchen and my living room so and before that, we did my den. So uh, with new paint, you know, some drywall, different things like that. So, so yeah. So go ahead and uh, subscribe to this channel and um, like this video. And I will talk to you all in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.